We're now in section 17 of our AutoCAD Electrical 2015 course. So as per the normal standards for working files, we have a Demo 17 project. I'm in the Schematic subfolder, and if I scroll down, you can see here that I've got Demo 35 drawing open. It's an entirely new blank drawing in the Schematic subfolder for you. The reason we've done that is we're looking at Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs. And what we're going to be doing is bringing PLCs into this new blank drawing. There's two types of PLCs that you can use on AutoCAD electrical drawings. The first one, which we're going to look at now, which is the parametric method of bringing a PLC into the drawing. So you go up to the schematic tab on the ribbon, click on this flyout here in the insert components panel and click on insert PLC parametric. And as you can see there, it inserts a parametrically generated PLC input output module. So I click there and now I can select what I want to bring into the drawing. So I'm just going to minimize so that you can see all the numbers there. I'm going to go for a 1761 MicroLogix 10. Now it's looked all of these up in the catalog files that are provided with this particular project in AutoCAD Electrical. So let's have a look at a MicroLogix L10. It's got 10 input output points. I'm just going to go for the top one. And then the graphics style I can select here. Depends on what style you want to use. I'm going to go for style number two. That's normally my preferred one. I'm going to go for a vertical module. You can also specify a horizontal module. The scale is one in this case. And the reason it's one is because I'm working to JIC Imperial Standards. And I know that this particular module will come in in inches as well. So if I click on OK now, there's my parametric module there. Now it's just an outline at the moment. When I click, you'll see lots of things come up on the screen, including module layout. Now the spacing is 0.75 inches between each input output point. I'm going to insert all of them, and I can allow spaces or breaks if I want to. In this case, I'm not going to, and I'm going to just click on OK now. It now asks for the number of the first module. So I'm going to put a number in there, 1000. Click on OK. Now it'll ask me for the beginning address. There's some quick picks there. So I'm going to start with that one there. Click on OK. And you'll see it parametrically put all of this information in. So it now needs the output point there as well. Click on OK again. And all of that goes in. If I zoom in now and just pan down a bit, you can see module 1000. There's the number that I put in. And there's all the input output points for that parametric PLC that I've just brought into my AutoCAD electrical drawing. So we're staying in the drawing demo 35 in the project demo 17. And you can see the parametric PLC module that I brought in in the previous video. Now, if I select that parametric PLC, right click, and on the right click menu, go to Edit Component. You can see that I can edit all of the settings for that parametric PLC within the dialog box. All the input output addresses, you can see there all of the information about the catalog information, the manufacturer, here's all the input output points, the description, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not actually going to go and edit anything, but you can see that that is all encompassing. It's all one parametric PLC module. I'm just going to cancel that now. Now, the other type of PLC module is a full unit PLC module, and it's basically a fixed AutoCAD electrical block with attributes. So you go to the schematic tab on the ribbon, insert components panel, click on the fly out here, and you want insert PLC full unit. So if I click there now like that, it takes me to what looks a bit like the icon menu. It is, but it's taken us straight to insert component, it's the JIC schematic symbols, and it's taken us straight to the PLC input output section of the icon menu. So I can now click on a particular setup that I might want to use, like an AB1761, like I use for the parametric one. And there's all the options available to me with a half inch rung spacing. I'm going to go for this one here, click on it, and I bring the block in like so. You can see all the input output points. I just click. I get the option to edit the PLC module. There's the tag, so I'll change that there, and we'll say it's PLC 200. We still get some of the catalog data, 
description is there. Input output addresses are already numbered for me. Click on OK. And when I zoom in now, what you'll notice is that it gets me to assign a symbol to a catalog number. Now, I'm not going to map the symbol to a catalog number in this case but you will get this every time you bring one in because you're bringing in an AutoCAD electrical block that then needs to be mapped to a catalog. I'm not going to map it just for speed in this case, but when I zoom in, you can see there's all the information. So it's a slightly different type of PLC module. If I click on it, it's still a component and I can still right click and edit the component. But notice the dialog box is ever so slightly different. So those are your two types of PLC module that you can bring into your AutoCAD electrical drawings. There will always be the requirement to edit your input output points and any other information on your PLC modules in your AutoCAD electrical drawings. So we're staying in Project Demo 17 and we've still got the drawing Demo 35 open and we've got our two PLC modules, both parametric and non-parametric, in the drawing. Now I've zoomed in a little bit here so that we can see input 0 here on the parametric one and input 9 here on the non-parametric one because we're going to edit those particular input points. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the parametric PLC first, right click, edit component. The reason I've selected that input 0 is it's going to be the default one that comes up in the edit PLC module dialog box. So I'm going to give it a description here, and it's going to be input zero. So there's my description line one. I'm going to change the pin numbers as well here. I'm going to make that zero, zero, and in zero, zero. Just going to renumber them with an extra zero so that you can see the change in the drawing itself. So when I click on OK now, you'll see those update. There you go, in zero, zero, and the zero, zero has all changed on the pin itself on the parametric PLC module. I can then click on the PLC module, right click, attributes. I'm going to move an attribute now, which is the input zero here. Right click, base point, and just position it over here like so. Click there, enter to finish. So I've edited the parametric PLC module. Now let's have a look at input nine here. I'm going to select this one. And again, it's a right click, edit component. And I want input 9, which strangely enough is the first one there too. So description, I'm going to call this input 9. And you'll notice I can give the pin number a number, if you see what I mean. So we'll call that I slash 9. And again, when I click on OK, it might ask me to map this to a catalog number. Remember, I did not map it before. I'm just going to put do not map for speed. Now, if I zoom in there now, can you see I've got an I9 that I've put in? There's the pin number, and there's the input 9 there. So what I might do there is click, right-click, and again, attribute, and I'm going to move that attribute, select it, right-click to confirm, base point. I might bring that in a bit closer to, say, there like so. Enter to finish, and when I zoom out, you can see there that I've edited both my parametric PLC module and my non-parametric PLC module. We're staying in Drawing Demo 35 in the Demo 17 project. And what we're going to look at now are individual input-output points. The quickest way to bring these into your AutoCAD electrical drawing is to go to the Schematic tab on the ribbon, Insert Components panel, and go to the Icon menu. As soon as you do that, select here the PLC input-output icon here. And you can see now, I'm using the JIC schematic symbols, but here you can see, look, I've got fixed units, an in first point one wire, an out first point one wire. So what I can do here is I can bring in individual input and output points. So let's go for a first point one wire, like so. And as you can see, there it is there on the crosshair. I'll click there, and that comes into the drawing. Now you can see I can edit the input output address, the description, so I'll just call this input 100, and the tag I could give it a PLC tag of say 1, and I'll click on OK. That comes into the drawing, and you can see now there is my input 100 PLC 1, and it's a single input point for a PLC. Now the reason you might bring in individual points like that is you might just want to show the one individual point that links up to either 
this PLC module or this PLC module. Now let's have a quick look at an output one as well. So again, icon menu, and we'll go to PLC input output, and we'll go for an output of a first point one wire as well. And I'll bring that in here and I'll click there like so. And we'll call this PLC two. And the description will be output one, like so. And I'll click on OK. And you can see there the output looks subtly different. Input is rectangular. Output has these little shaved off corners. If I zoom in close, you can see that, that is actually a filleted arc on each end. And that's how you differentiate between an individual input and output PLC point on your AutoCAD electrical drawings. As with previous videos about the PLC modules, we're staying in the Demo 35 drawing in the Demo 17 project. We're going to look at creating and modifying a parametric PLC. So we go to the schematic tab on the ribbon, insert components panel, same flyout as before, insert PLC parametric. We're going to go for the same Micrologix L10. So it's that one there. So it's remembered it from last time. If it doesn't remember it, it's an Allen Bradley 1761 Micrologix 10 and it's the top one underneath the Micrologix 10 type of PLC module. I'm going to go for the second graphic style like I did before. It's going to be a vertical module again, and the scale will be left at 1, and there is my type there. So I click on OK, and there it is there, ready to come into the drawing. So I'm going to click there. This time, though, I'm going to leave the spacing at 0.75, 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to allow spaces and breaks. It says this module already has a predefined breakpoint. What I'm going to do is customize it completely. I'm going to click on OK, and the module will be 2000, like so. That's the input output point that it's going to start at. I can insert the next input output point. As you can see, it's adding it as I go along. Watch the PLC module. Insert the next point, insert the next point. As soon as I get to this point, can you see I've got to give it a beginning address? So I'll just go for the quick pick there and say OK. And then I can add a spacer like that. That's the little red cross there. Add another spacer. Next input output point. Now I might want to break the module. As soon as I do that, can you see there's the next bit of the module there? So I'll place it next door. And now I'm just going to go insert all, click on OK. And now it'll ask for a beginning address for the output points. So I'll go quick pick again there and just insert that one. Click on OK. And there you go. So I've customized this half of the PLC module here. Put a break in. And then, as you can see, it starts at the top there and comes down. Now you can do this when you need extra space on an AutoCAD electrical drawing. But that's how you create and modify your parametric PLC modules. We're staying in the drawing demo 35 in the demo 17 project. And what we're going to look at now is exporting our PLC data out to an XLS, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. You'll notice I'm looking at the PLC, which is non-parametric. And there's the input nine input point there. Now, the reason I've done that is for the next video when we actually edit the spreadsheet and bring it back into the drawing. I want to stay with this view here. Let's go to the Import Export Data tab on the ribbon here, and we're going to export to spreadsheet here. So we click on this icon here, and we want the PLC input output address descriptions, that one there. I click on OK. I want to do this for the active drawing, so it will do all of the PLC modules. And we're going out to an Excel file format. You can go out to an Access file format or tab delimited or comma delimited ASCII text file. We'll keep the location codes in. We'll just select all there and click on OK. Now it's prompting me to select the file name for the XLS output. I'm just going to go with the default name, which is Demo 35 XLS, which is the same name as the drawing. And that's going into my Demo 17 project folder where all of my project drawings are for this AutoCAD electrical project. I'm going to click on Save now, and that has exported that data out to a spreadsheet. Now, the way that I can check that is I can quickly go down to the taskbar, 
look in my project folder and there's my demo 35 XLS. If I double click that, that'll open up Excel. And what will happen there is it'll load that up. Takes a few seconds. There we go. And there's all the information there. Now there is a macro. You might need to enable it. So just enable the content like so and click on OK. If I scroll down now, you can see there's my input nine field there. So you've now successfully exported out spreadsheet data from your PLC modules in your AutoCAD electrical drawings. In the previous video, we exported data out from our drawing for the PLC input and output addresses to an Excel spreadsheet. Now I've still got that spreadsheet open and we're still in drawing demo 35 in the demo 17 project. So let's go to the spreadsheet. You can see the input 9, input output address value there. I'm going to change that now to 009. That's all I'm going to change and press enter like that. That will take me down to the next cell in the spreadsheet. Now what I'm going to do is save that file with that particular change. So I'll save that there like so and then I'll minimize that back down to the Windows taskbar. I go to the Import Export Data tab on the ribbon, and this time I want to import from the spreadsheet. There's the spreadsheet, Demo 35 XLS in the Demo 17 project folder. So I select it, and I click on Open. Now, I need to update the drawings per spreadsheet data file, so I'm going to go Active Drawing Only, because it only applies to this drawing. I'm going to force any spreadsheet new values to uppercase and flip any updated tag wire numbers to fixed. Click on OK. Takes a few seconds to go through, but you can see that the input changes to input 009. That's why I stayed zoomed in on that particular view. So you can see there now that what you can do is you can export data out to an Excel spreadsheet, allow someone with no CAD experience to update those input output values. You might have an electrical technician who doesn't have any CAD expertise, but he has a lot of actual electrical expertise. So you can pass him the spreadsheet, he can update all the data for you, pass the spreadsheet back to you, saved with the new values, and you can import that data into your PLC drawing, as we've just done so in this case. So that's how you can edit and then import spreadsheet data back into your AutoCAD electrical drawings.